All right, what's good everyone? It's another average gamer reviews and welcome to a plague tale innocence. So you may be wondering what's up with my voice. Well, I'm a bit sick. So, uh, yeah, uh, this review may sound like this, which is completely different to the others. Uh, I apologize. Hopefully next week it'll be back to the same voice. But yeah, anyway, enough about my voice. Let's talk about the game. Well, I think this is one of the like hidden gems and a half like I I don't see anyone talking about it and it's crazy like the amount of stuff there's like the amount of good stuff you hear like see about this game when you actually search for it is incredible like everyone who plays it loves it including me but we'll get onto that later but it's like unknown it's, I don't know why the marketing just never hit I guess it do be one of them but it is what it is and it is the first I guess non-horror horror game yeah, I'm probably gonna move on to the standard branch because it's more like a action adventure game so we'll move on to that it's gonna be like a whole new tier list for that one so yeah let's get on to the game shall we so this game came out in 2019 and I felt like it was heavily overlooked. I didn't hear anyone talking about it until like I was recommended to it, uh, it by someone like very recently. And even then, like it's not that big of a game, even though it's so good. The game centers the plot around the uh, alternate reality of the Black Plague, which is uh, the rats that infested Europe, as you may know. Uh, but instead of uh, a be it being a virus that takes people out, it's more of a giant horde of rats that just kills people. This is the first game of the Plague Tale series as of 2021. Uh, there is no other game, but I do see that there is a, another sequel coming in 2022 based on the company's website so let's let's hope they bring the same quality to the next game so let's talk about the story which is the, like the biggest part of this game it's a heavily story driven game so like i said before the game takes place in an alternate reality black plague in the 1348 which is, I think, two years after the real-life Black Plague started, which was in 1346. So we're, like, two years in. Uh, the game starts off with, like, a really sour note, as to foreshadow the entire story, I guess. During, like, an impromptu hunt, uh, the main character, Amicia, and her dog end up in a dark swamp, where her dog is dragged down a pit and slaughtered, with blood gushing out from the bottom. We didn't. We don't know what killed the dog at this point, and her father uh, rushed her and rushed those two or them two all the way back home. Uh, after arriving, uh, we do find out that Amicia is part of a royal. I mean, not royal, more like noble family. Uh, she has like a castle and shit, uh, and this is where it all starts. The darkness begins, I guess you could say. Uh, the Inquisition arrives at the gate, demanding their family to surrender her younger bro uh, brother, Hugo. Like most families would decide, uh, they said no. And, uh, well, the Inquisition did not take take that lightly. They kind of just begun slaughtering the entire village just to get Hugo. So our goal is to stealthily escape because at this point we don't have combat elements uh, but we have, we have to escape the compound and find safety uh, the majority of the story revolves around Amicia and Hugo trying to get away from the Inquisition as well as the rats uh, the rats do fear light I think fire is mainly used for the game to scare them off uh, so if you're caught in like the shadows you're dead in milliseconds unless you have a defensive but yeah, this, the whole story is based around you trying to figure out why the Inquisition's after you, or your brother to be more exact. 
where the rats came from, what they are, and how to stop them. That's the that's the basic concept of the story. And I've at first I thought it was gonna be kind of bad, but it they do bring so much immersion. It was beautifully done. The game the game story is brilliant. The concept is brilliant. And then the way they introduced every character was so good. Because instead of just having at the start of the game, hey, look, you now have a band of three characters. Now there's five of you. And you must continue. They're slowly introduced over the time. With like, in like, desperate scenes. In some cases, you meet them like, at the start of an area. And only towards like, the start of the next area do you actually start to uh like work with them which is great for story wise because it builds up the entire character and you see them across the story without having to actually fully interact with them which is brilliant the the law behind the rats and the inquisition is told like literally through dialogue and it's you can't miss it in the game there's no like hidden law that you have to find notes to read nothing like that everything's told to you it's brilliant i understood the story i love the story and i can't wait for the next game so i'm just gonna give it a 9 out of 10 for story i can't give it a 10 out of 10 because it's not perfect there were some loopholes i won't tell them because they are spoilers so i, re I was re i'm really contemplating do i tell them but no i won't because uh, i'm pretty sure it'll spoil like the ending of the game uh, of the game so I won't, I won't tell you the loopholes, but they do exist. That's why I can't give it a 10 out of 10. Now on to the gameplay. Uh, the fundamentals are great. Uh, your only weapon of choice is a slingshot. You can throw certain items as well. But the game can be played in full stealth, full no one can see me mode. Or you can go gun ho, kill everyone like I did. Uh, there is there is literally zero punishment for doing either one as far as I know I feel like the story ends the same way you can murder anyone and you can get away with it the stealth does feel very satisfying they I feel like they did put a lot of effort into the stealth like they placed perfect items perfectly for you to hit and they like set up in the tutorial they set up stuff for you to teach you like oh yeah you don't have to just distract the guards you can distract them wait for them to walk back and while their back is turned you can go which i i don't think i've ever seen in a game like in a tutorial literally teach you that which i thought was great uh over the course of the entire game you are taught like different sling ammo sling ammo is that is that a word for it it's stuff you can throw essentially which allows you to do like various things such as like clear an entire like area of rats force a guard to remove their helmet or there are like defensive options such as putting guards to sleep or kill the, all the rats in the underneath you when they're trying to kill you but these items are like extremely expensive so you wouldn't have like an infinite amount of them and uh as far as the game goes everything is a one-shot kill towards you that is and most enemies so uh, unless you're talking about bosses everything is one shot kill so one rock to the head on an enemy kills them instantly uh you get stabbed you're dead uh rats get on you and you don't have a defensive you're dead rats get on you and you do have a defensive but you miss the qte you're dead and like I said, they are expensive, so you're not always going to have them. But yeah, it's a one-shot kill in everything. And there's a lot of like ranged enemies. So like there are archers and stuff that just one-shot kill you. But it's not like too difficult because they're placed so well and so easily avoidable. So I, I do got I got a wood that I got to give them that, that it is very well done there. There are a lot of puzzles in the game. Uh, most of the puzzles are based around getting through rats and rats and guards at the same time. You could say the entire game is like a puzzle game because it's like stealth. If you go stealth, everything's a puzzle game, really. I feel like a stealth game is just a giant puzzle. But yeah, yeah, there are like puzzles to kill 
gods without being seen by using rats by like uh, extinguishing their flames and stuff like that which is great i loved it i love i really loved it uh personally i love the gameplay uh it didn't get boring at any point in time there was one section that I, that they forced me to redo the same puzzle, which was really, really fucking lame. I wish they, they skipped that, but it was like a more of a story thing than a puzzle one. Over the course of the game, the uh, action in the game got more and more intense, as you would expect. But I didn't expect it to get this intense. I thought this was a story game, but the gameplay really kept me on my toes, where you had to like craft mid combat in some areas where you had to like dodge to the side and then craft an item to then hit the person which honestly i've i've had so much i think i've done it in previous games but they were like more action game based games like dark souls kind of thing where it's like the premise is the gameplay the like the story isn't the main feature the gameplay is but to see that here in the, such a story rich game it was amazing and the game definitely deserves an outstanding 10 out of 10 for gameplay. I loved it every minute of it. Oh, it's a good game. I would, I'll say it here. Even though the reviews know that it's a good game. Now, uh, let's move on to the graphics and art style. So, as you can probably see on my screen, as it's been playing for the past like 10 minutes probably, the game looks stellar. It fits the theme of like dark medieval times really fucking well. The rats alone aren't too detailed and they kind of look smooth. But you're not meant to see them alone. The whole idea is that they're meant to be in like the shadows and there's meant to be like hordes of them. They're meant to be, they, they feel like liquid rats in some places as they like spill from cracks and overflow areas like water, which is an interesting design and uh main characters look good yeah but they were quite generic but they did fit the fit the theme quite well my personal favorite is when you get like rats in a corner uh, and then you like move the fire towards them they like fizzle out and uh what's interesting about that design is that they never respawn once you kill a rat in an area, it's perma dead. So there are a limited amount of rats in an area, which is amazing, which I, I love the idea of. So it's not just like, oh yeah, well, eventually they'll just come back. Uh, level design wise, uh, this is my, I always overlook level design, but I'm going to try and include it into here like a lot more. Uh, the game is very linear. Uh, there's no mini map. There's no arrows that tell you where to go but you never get lost like there are areas where you're like running through a town like really quickly and you never get lost you never take the incorrect path because of how well it is designed to make you look like oh yeah i don't know if it's the camera work or if it's like the level design but whatever it is it always leads you to the right area without you having to like fail multiple times which i think is amazing in design if the game forces you to die keep learning through that death i feel like they failed on level design but in this game it was something else now the music this this stands out it's not a playlist type game or music but oh my god it sounds good in the game the heavy violin the loot it's all amazing if you like close your eyes in certain areas you can tell what the game developers wanted you to feel in those sections instead of just being like generic background music it's literally like you hear the like violin ramp up you're like oh shit it's combat time or like there's the like the rats themselves have their own distinct music when they come out and show up which which like takes the game from like mild pressure to like diablo source level bro like you don't feel it like most games you don't feel the intensity and the pressure applying but here it it's something else overall uh for the design and art thing music i'm gonna give it a 13 out of 15 
uh the game design is amazing the music is outstanding but the character designs aren't that unique they seem very generic this isn't a bad thing in most cases as they're using stereotypes that can help to like show oh yeah this person is a thief because they're short and slender this guy's a blacksmith because he's large and bulky it's like it's not very creative in that way but it, it does feel like the realism uh, and the other point was the fact that it's not like the music isn't like playlist worthy it's worthy of re-listening because some of the tracks are pretty good but it's not like oh i want this on my playlist while i work out kind of music or like i want this while i work but sometimes you can just come back to it and listen to it it's that kind of good music all right on to personal enjoyment uh if you think at this point i'm gonna say nah the game was doo doo dog shit even though i've been praising it like out of like character across the whole series, like uh review you'd be you would need to put yourself in a mental hospital bro like this game is not underrated by if anything everyone everyone rates this game but the issue is that not many people know of the game which is the sad thing like the story is brilliantly done the gameplay is brilliant the music's brilliant it it's one of the true like truly hidden gems of our like of our time like you you don't say this often because i feel like it's cheesy to be like oh, this game is the most hidden gem game of our generation but I, I truly feel like it's it's been lost in the wave of games and i really hope people play it more especially with the sequel coming out because this game is fantastic as for the duration of the game so normally i would say uh 15 to 25 hours for an action adventure game to tell a full story so like in my expectations it's not long enough even though the story was perfectly told and all that but it's just i have certain expectations for durations for certain types of games and just didn't meet it sadly like the game was never rushed and the combat never got boring but it did not meet my base expectations which might mean i need to update my base expectations but we might revisit that later but still i'm giving it a 9 out of 10. well that means this is the first generic game i guess i don't know what to call this tier list like the standard tier list or the base, the base tier list i think i'm gonna call it the base tier list of uh games which is just non-horror games because horror games usually are poorly or a lot more poorly done overall but yeah this game uh gets a 41 out of 45 and that just means we're going to be putting it right here on the s tier making a great start to the tier list and i would 100 percent recommend you play this game i would easily say you can you i would recommend this game it was i think it was free on epic games like uh, a couple of weeks ago if you want to pick it up there uh it's probably heavily discounted now because it's two years old but yeah i highly recommend you play this game so far it's the best game i've played this year that i've reviewed now that that's over i would say again uh sorry about the voice and like the enthusiasm uh they have dipped a bit for this video because uh i am a bit sick but i wanted to make sure i get one of these out here on sunday but yeah thank you so much for sticking it out Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you on the next game review. Peace.